Welcome to Smart Addition's chemistry lesson on acids and bases. In this lesson, we are going to explain the key differences between acids and bases and discuss specific reactions involving acids and bases. So what are they? Well, they are both compounds, but are largely considered chemical opposites, as each one has a different set of properties opposing the other. For example, when you dissolve each compound type into water, acids generally display properties opposing those as a base. Acids will taste sour and turn litmus red. Alternatively, bases will taste bitter and turn litmus blue. Now they share a property for acting corrosive or causing damage to specific materials. Looking at these lists, we can see common names and formulas. We can also see likely examples of each from our everyday lives. Looking at them, it's easy to see that one additional property bases have is that they are slippery in solution, while they are found in common cleaning agents and soaps but more on that later. Because now there's one key trait that essentially distinguishes acids and bases, and that's how they behave when dissolved in aqueous solution. While there's no question that these acids are in fact acids, and these bases are in fact bases, different theories are keen on exactly how an acid will react versus a base in terms of ion donation and production. Let's consider our first theory, the Arrhenius theory. That explains that acids contain at least one hydrogen atom or proton, designated H positive, which can form a hydronium ion of H3O positive when dissolved in water. Alternatively, bases will form hydroxide ions in water, designated as OH minus ions, while they could also accept hydronium ions from the acids. By this, acidic solutions have more hydrogen ions than hydroxide ions, and basic solutions have more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions. But one limitation of this theory is that it does not account for acids and bases that lack a hydrogen or hydroxide ion in their molecular structure. This is where the Bronsted-Lowry theory comes into play. According to this theory, an acid is defined as a hydrogen ion, or proton donor, that increases the concentration of hydronium ions in solution, and a base is a hydrogen ion or proton acceptor that increases hydroxide ion concentration in solution. So when an acid donates a hydrogen ion, it produces a conjugate base, and vice versa. When a base accepts a hydrogen ion, it produces a conjugate acid. Let's look at this following example. Ammonia, NH3, is a base, willing to accept a proton to create a conjugate acid of NH4 positive. Ammonia will accept the proton from the acid in this instance, water, to increase the hydroxide ion concentration in solution, also considered the conjugate base. Now there's one final theory, called the Lewis theory, but this theory is very similar to the Bronsted-Lowry theory, but rather than defining acids and bases upon proton donation or acceptance, the Lewis theory defines these compounds based on electron movement during an acid-base reaction. So in the Bronsted-Lowry theory, an acid was a proton donor. A Lewis acid is considered an electron pair acceptor. And alternatively, a Bronsted-Lowry base is the proton acceptor, a Lewis base is an electron pair donor. So let's look at this equation. What is the conjugate acid? Well, let's recap our theories. Now, when we first went through our theories, a conjugate acid is formed when a Bronsted-Lowry base accepts a hydrogen ion. So looking at our chemical equation, acetic acid would donate a hydrogen ion to the base in this reaction, water. This would make hydronium the conjugate acid and the acetate ion the conjugate base. In this instance, water was acting as a base and not like an acid as in our previous example. It's also important to note that free H positive ions, or hydrogen protons, do not just float about in solution. We don't see any here. That's because they bind with water to form hydronium, which we do see here. However, it is not uncommon to see both hydrogen ions or protons, as well as hydronium ions, used interchangeably in chemical reactions. The protons are accounted for in some theories, but it's important to highlight the key differences in ways to define acid and base compounds as a result. Now some reactions may not produce conjugate acids or bases. Sometimes when an acid and a base react with each other, they will form water and salt, an ionic compound that includes any cation except a hydrogen proton, and any anion except a hydroxide ion. When this occurs, this is considered a neutralization reaction. The acid and base have neutralized and balanced each other out, leaving no room for free-floating protons or ions. Let's look at this equation. 
Hydrobromic acid and potassium hydroxide react to form a salt, potassium bromide and water. If we notice, this is actually a double replacement reaction in which our acid and base compounds neutralize to form two different compounds as the products, leaving no room for protons or ions to float about. But that doesn't mean products can't float. Neutralization reactions do not require reactants to be in the aqueous phase of solids while as an acid or base, and can still proceed through a neutralization reaction to completion. But looking at our next example here, the same process ensues. Our acid and base compounds of hydrochloric acid and magnesium hydroxide combine and neutralize, a double replacement reaction, forming a salt of magnesium chloride and water. Notice that a coefficient of 2 is necessary for the hydrochloric acid on the reactant side, as well as the water molecules in the products. That's because when two molecules of hydrochloric acid react with magnesium hydroxide, only one molecule of salt magnesium chloride will form for every two molecules of water. This keeps the reaction balanced in terms of accounting for atoms. Using this equation, we can actually notice that hydrochloric acid is classified as a strong acid. Look at our table here. We have a list of common acids and bases, categorized as strong or weak. But what makes an acid or base strong or weak? Strength is dependent upon how readily they donate a hydrogen ion or deprotonate. So strong acids, like hydrochloric acid, readily donate hydrogen ions and actually completely ionize in solution, depicted here in our image. This is different from the weak acids, which only partially ionize in solution, which you can see here as the protons and ions stay formed in our image. This accounts for why strong acid reactions produce the maximum number of ions, more than weak, and why strong acid reactions are irreversible, which we can see here in our example. Similarly, the strength of a base is whether or not it will fully dissociate in solution. When they remove the hydrogen ion from a molecule, they produce metal ions and hydroxide ions. The weaker bases will only partially dissociate and have reversible reactions as well. Now this list can seem overwhelming, but it may be simpler to think about in terms of the pH scale. The pH value of a solution describes how acidic or basic a solution is based on the numbers from 0 to 14. A solution is acidic if it scores less than 7, becoming increasingly more and more acidic the lower the value. That's because numbers greater than 7 are considered basic, and increasingly more basic the higher on the scale it is. Each compound increases traveling away from the neutral pH value of exactly 7. Pure water is completely neutral. So while our list of commonly known strong and weak compounds can be overwhelming, knowing how some products that compare to one another on the scale is a simple way to try and keep them organized in your head. This concludes our video lesson on acids and bases. For more information, please refer to your text and continue watching our lesson series on chemistry lessons.